channel. So uh, today I am prepping uh, the 55 Chevy pickup truck that uh, I've got a little build series on for a uh, final coat of primer before I paint the cab itself. Uh, I've gone back and I've blocked it as you've seen in some of the other videos with guide coat. Then I've gone and addressed those areas with a little bit of filler and then there's some areas where uh, it may have already been high and it blocked back down to some body filler. This truck was sandblasted as some of you guys may remember uh, prior to uh, me uh, getting it and starting to work on it which gave me tons and tons and tons of issues. Very thin coats of putty almost over the entire truck. Uh, not much rust repair, I had to give it that, but the extensive amount of dents that I've had to block out, find, and uh, deal with has been notorious. Uh, it would have almost been easier to start with a, a new cab, but at that's not me. This is savable. It's just uh, a lot of labor intense work and a lot of uh, a lot of time. So anyway, I'm, uh, I guess uh, the point of this video is to show you what I'm doing today, but also touch on uh, the details. And the details aren't just the part that you can see or your friends and stuff see when you pull up at a, uh, a cruise in or a car show. You've got to get, I mean, to, to do the professional quality work that I try to help your, you know, the guys that do it themselves get is to, uh, the attention to detail everywhere. The whole entire thing needs to be as perfect as you feel like you need it to be. Uh, you know, not just the outside. So, uh, Anyway, I'm, I'm getting down all in the grooves, blocking it down really nice with a roll of uh, paper here rolled up. And uh, it's 320 because it's going to get primer again. It's not going to get a high build primer this time. It's just going to get uh, more of a primer sealer type coat just to cover up some of the bare metal spots on some of these edges that I've sanded. Um, but anyway, but anyway, you want to uh, address all these problems. You don't want orange peel. You don't want to put really nice shiny paint in here and find out that you've missed something. So run your fingers in there. See if there's any rough spots, anything that you missed. If you feel a little uncertain, if you've got uh, hard calluses or something like that, you can always put a towel in here like this. And uh, by doing this, you can feel a whole lot more. And sometimes, you know, I'll do this on the side, you know, and then at the same time, when I'm wiping it down with uh, uh, my cleaner prior to putting paint on it, I'm also looking for anything that I may have missed. If you miss something, hey, it's just gonna add a few more hours to it, you know, uh, where you've gotta either sand it and or put putty if it's low. But you may not want this stuff as perfect as what I'm trying to do. Uh, I have been a professional car builder for the last 25 years. And by professional, it doesn't mean I know everything. But I learn something new every day. Professional means that somebody's hired me to do a job for them. And uh, so I do it for a living. Therefore, I'm a professional. You know, uh, not the best in the world. Not the worst, but I enjoy doing what I do, and it's all passion driven. I bring one on a whole lot, but I just wanted to give you that little quick update of what I'm doing. I'm gonna, uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you, uh, we're gonna be doing some priming. I've got some more parts in the shop, in the paint booth, and I'm gonna prime at the same time. A couple of pieces on the Bronco. Actually, and a couple of pieces on the Impala. So uh, I'm just going to try to make the most of, uh, you know, the paint booth today and hit some primer on some stuff that's fixing to be finished and some primer on some stuff that uh, needs to be, you know, blocked down. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. So hang tight. We're going to start spraying some stuff in a minute and uh, carry you guys with me. The way I look at it, 
this area right here deserves to look just as good as the center of the door over there. You think nobody's gonna see this. The motor's gonna be sitting here. The distributor's gonna be sitting here. But I see it now and I appreciate what I do. I value my workmanship. Somebody else will see this one day and they'll appreciate the time that I took to straighten all this out and make it all nice and neat. All right, I see some spots that I need to put some putty real quick so that I can hit them with the primer. <clears throat> I told you about uh, sanding without a block. Mainly that's on a flat surface where you're gonna put corn rolls. This right here has got a lip, it goes into another lip, and there's just not a block. I don't have a block that would get in here and do this. So you've got to just do it lightly like this and change, your, change the direction. I don't know if you can see that. I'll sand three different ways in here, as many different directions as I can to keep it from uh, having a uh, a groove, sandpaper groove, or a corn roll. Some of you guys may like to build them as fast as you can and drive them more. Me, I like to drive them, but at the same time, I like to know that I've at least put my best effort into uh, doing the work. All right, I got the parts. I'll show you around here in a minute. Uh, this is another tip for you that it took a long time for me to learn. Uh, stopped by a buddy's house and he had these mixing caps on his paints that he used uh, quite regularly, like primers, clear, stuff like that, where he was just uh, not using the whole gallon, but not wanting the paint to, uh, not wanting to hammer the lid back on and all of that. Anyway, these mixing caps go on uh, paint mixing machines and they're really neat and they don't cost a lot. Fortunately enough, uh, I've got a really, really good paint rep and uh, he, uh, he takes care of me on that stuff. But anyway, uh, just a, you know, this usually goes in a mixing machine, uh, like at a big, big paint shop. And it's got a little gear up here where the machine comes on ever so often and stirs the paint. Well, take that gear off and uh, you can put your drill on here and mix your paint uh, while it's got this cap on it. And the cap is an easy pour cap. It's got a little thumb press here, slides back, it pours. You throw these things away when the, when the paint's gone. Or in this case, I use it for whatever color I'm spraying the most if I'm doing an all over job, I'll put the cap on the color and then I've got it on the primer that I'm, where I'm priming paint, priming parts, excuse me. Anyway, that's just a neat trick. Uh, they're only a couple of bucks if they charge you for them. If they don't charge you for them, that's great. So uh, anyway, I've already mixed this up. I've already poured it uh, four to one, you know, four parts primer, one part activator, and I'm gonna use a slow reducer because this part of my shop's not air conditioned. The slow reducer is for 75 and up. And I got a thermometer in here. And guys, it's pushing about 90, 88 to 90 degrees in here. And uh, let me get this mixed up. All right, it's super hot. I should wait till in the morning to do this, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I've got the paint mixed up. So go ahead and hit it and let's see what we can do and uh, get these parts primed and then uh, we'll take a look at it uh, in the morning. All right, these parts right here are all the handmade inner fenders, radiator uh, support cap, the uh, uh, right side fender for the 61 bubble top. I handmade all that stuff back uh, a while back. Then we're gonna prime the grill and the tailgate of the Bronco. 
Uh, and then now we've got the uh, 55 Chevy truck. And uh, the doors have not been primed since the last body work has been done. So I've got to prime those. And then there's a few touch-up spots that I've gone around and uh, fixed. Everything's already been wet sanded on this and I may have gone through an area, some spots up in here. I'm gonna hit those with primer, come back and touch them up a little bit. And then uh, of course this is the other door. And what it was, I, I couldn't get door hinges and I'd done all the body work on the body except for where it meets the door and the door gaps and all that. So when I finally got hinges after a year, uh, I went ahead and body worked the doors to the cab and got all my body lines good. All right, got it mixed up really good. Make sure you strain your paint. All right, always leave just a little bit left over in the cup because uh, you may forget, you may miss a spot. If you forget and you miss a spot, you spread out everything. Well, you've got a little bit left over and you always got some to come back to when I catch that one spot. The older I get, the more spots I miss. All right, so I had uh, one of the subscribers uh, message me, wanted to know off of another video what primer I used. Now, this is a primer that I use. Uh, it's a budget-friendly primer. It's nowhere near the bottom of the line, and it's a, just a few clicks down from a top-of-the-line name brand, you know, BASF, you know, uh, DuPont-type product. Uh, Exalta type product. <clears throat> it is a uh, high build 2K direct to metal primer. Now it's a filler, high build filler. It's a sealer, so that means you can uh, <clears throat> dilute it with your uh, reducer, 2K reducer, and spray super smooth right before you put down your uh, color or it's easy to sand and it's also a high fill primer, meaning you are trying to get over sand scratches, fill some light imperfections and stuff uh, as you're coming down. But what I like about it, it does all three and it is a direct to metal and it's a real good product. I'm not putting a sales pitch out there, but I'm just giving you a little bit of information uh, because I did have a viewer message me about that and I'm priming today, so now's a good time to cover that. All right, so I got the uh, parts primed. The Bronco parts came out really nice. Uh, pretty much ready to uh, wet sand and paint. I flipped these over already. I've uh, got the back sides primed. I love this product. It sprays out really, really smooth when you want it to uh, be a primer, and it sprays out nice and heavy when you want it to uh, be a high build. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, that's the uh, 55 Chevy cab. Good day's work. Next time you see me working on this stuff, we're gonna be putting color on it. That'll be a real good day. That's gonna be a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. I'm glad you guys came in to help today. Thank you so much for all the support that you're giving me on the channel. Uh, we hit a milestone. Over the weekend, we got a thousand subscribers. We're steadily growing. Uh, I am so thankful for you guys uh, that support me like that. Uh, I hope that I'm bringing you uh, some information that you can carry out into your shop and get some things done. Uh, it's kind of doing it my way. It's not always the best way. It's just my way. 
So, with that said, get out in the garage and go build something. Till next time, thanks for watching.